Okay. We can go. Okay. Let's go to call to order, please. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Murray. Here. Commissioner Condon. Here. Commissioner Rodoni. Present. Commissioner Phillips. Here. Commissioner Blanchfield. Here. Let the record reflect that Commissioners Adam and Arnold are excused today, and in attendance are alternate members uh, Burdick and Baker. Okay, and we've got a quorum. We can conduct business. Uh, the first matter is an introduction of our new analyst, and uh, I'll turn that over to you. Well, thank you, Chair. Uh, as some of you got a chance to meet him uh, earlier, I'm certainly pleased to bring uh, today Kevin Thacker, uh, who joined the LAFCA ranks as an extra help analyst uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, Kevin's a student at Sonoma State and is already uh, paying dividends in terms of his expertise in GIS. So what I'd like to do is just ask Kevin to give you 20 seconds uh, of an introduction. I'm sure uh, going forward you get to uh, meet him in more detail. Okay. Um, thank you for allowing me to be here. And um, I've had a very uh, interesting and informative uh, first couple weeks here at uh, LAFCO. And I'm uh, looking forward to continuing to work with all of you. Great, Kevin. Thanks very much. You clearly are welcome. We've got an ambitious work program <laughs> this year. We're going to need all the help we can get. Uh, so welcome aboard, and I think you'll get a good mentoring here as well. Uh, approval of the agenda. I'm going to assume that the commissioners uh, uh, approve the agenda unless I see or hear differently. Uh, yes, just one item, item three on the consent. This minutes is we could uh, pull that. I'm not sure if we need to. Do okay, it. we'll do that when we get down there. Okay, I'll move to approve the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. Uh, second. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Commissioner opposed. <coughs> Commissioner abstaining. Agenda is approved. Uh, we'll move to the public comment period, opportunity of members of the public to speak to the Commission on matters that we don't have agendized for discussion this evening. Uh, I have no indication anyone wishes to address the Commission under this subject matter. Uh, being so, uh, we will move on to the consent calendar items, of which we have many, uh, six. And... Uh, the first deals with our uh, financial report and projections for FY 2014-15 and uh, proposed amendments to our current fiscal year budget, essentially a redirection of funds, and approval of the minutes from our last meeting in August, and a progress report on the work plan and pending proposals, this is information only, and a report on the uh, on Cal AFCO's uh, board candidates, uh, which we have one amongst us, and this is for information only. So, Craig, you had a question concerning uh, the approval of the meeting minutes. You want to pull that off and have us come back to discuss that? Well, we can, or it's very simply, I could speak to it now. Well, let's let's just uh, unless anybody has any other matters they want to discuss, uh, I, I'd like to get approval of uh, one through six without three. I still um, move. Second. Got a motion a second to approve the consent calendar except for item number three. All those commissioners in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstaining? That motion passes, and we'll turn to uh, the approval of the meeting minutes of our last meeting. Sure. Thank you, Jeff. So, page four on the minutes of the draft minutes of August 14, item 11, second paragraph. Just um, it says Commissioner Murray commented that the public should be aware that there's some technical errors in the grand jury report. And I think what was significant was said was that the public should read all the comment letters back to complete the report in order to get a full picture of, of the responses and, and of that grand jury report. 
So that, that wasn't captured, so how did that switch? You'd so like that integrated into yes. the final minutes? Yes. As, okay. I, One other minor item. Um, meeting was called to order by the vice chair, not the chair. Take one. Well, I've got both corrections noted, and we will, uh, if uh, a motion to approve the agenda, uh, the minutes as amended, uh, we'll reflect those in the record. Okay, and so I'll, I'll ask for a motion to uh, amend the uh, minutes as corrected by Commissioner Murray. We're going to move that. Do I hear a second? Second. I have a motion to second to approve uh, all those signatures. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And any commissioner? No, yes. I'm staying. I'm sorry. It's not as much. You know, thank you very much for reminding me. I'm staying as well. I wasn't here. So we've got one, two, three, four. Okay. We can do that. Uh, so all those commissioners in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And all those commissioners abstaining. So, uh, for so the purpose of a, well, no, for the purpose of the quorum, since uh, Commissioner Burdick was uh, uh, present for this particular item, he can stand in. Uh, and there we go. We've got a majority. Okay. Thank you. Except the word vice. Or the word chair. West Rand were very particular about that. Okay. I'm sure glad I came. Um, so we have a majority uh, of the commissioners approving the minutes, the minutes from the last meeting, and we have two abstentions and no objections. All right. We'll now move to public hearings. The first public hearing is the proposed comprehensive update to our fee schedule. Thank you, Chair. So, uh, as mentioned, this uh, loan notice public hearing is for the Commission to pick up on its discussion from August uh, and consider the recommendations of your policy committee in uh, adopting a comprehensive update to Marin Lafco's schedule of fees. Um, a fee uh, schedule that has essentially been dormant uh, for a number of years, and as we provided in our work plan, uh, one of the key uh, directions that the Commission had would be uh, take a look at the fee schedule, figure out if there's an appropriate level of cost recovery we should be pursuing, and if there are any implementation improvements uh, therein. And so we brought you a proposed update for first reading in August. We then circulated that update uh, for a public review uh, period. And the item before you is entirely intact from what we talked about again uh, in August. Uh, that means if you go ahead and approve uh, the update as presented, uh, you are going to make a number of significant changes to the way this LAFCO goes about calculating, uh, setting, and ultimately collecting fees. Uh, the impact to the end user, whether they be a city, uh, a district, or a landowner, uh, is going to be about 300% give or take. Now, in of itself, that's a big number, but again, Given this fee schedule has been left unchanged really since the late 1990s, uh, to be expected. Um, I'm going to stand by the details of the agenda report itself, but I do just want to highlight again there's these five key issues that the committee has focused in on uh, that's driving the change. First and foremost, uh, to increase the hourly staff rate from $50 to 127 uh, to make a fundamental switch from having uh, a variable fee schedule and switch it over to a fixed fee schedule that is premised on uh, what's the level of consent, do we have 100% or not, and uh, what is the type of environmental review document that we either need to prepare or review. Uh, make it explicit that all fees going forward at Marin Lafco are going to be non-refundable. Uh, also to assign a set number of hours to just about all proposals that come before you, uh, not only to determine what exactly the application fee is going to be then, but then also to have a very clear line in the sand that tells your staff when we deal with a black swan of a proposal that just seems to be going sideways, we know when we approach a certain hour threshold, we're going to convert 
to a deposit base and start billing on an hourly basis there, uh, thereafter. Again, to preserve your own uh, costs in, in handling these planning and regulatory activities. And then finally, and this is unique for most LAFCOs, the policy committee believes uh, there is merit to establishing a municipal service review maintenance fee. Uh, similar to what cities and counties do with their own general plan, uh, we're proposing that you add a 20% uh, fee on top of the base uh, baseline charge. And again, that would go to your cost recovery in now having to prepare these studies by way of the legislature every five years or so. So those are the five changes that are driving the update before you. I do want to make one uh, additional comment that uh, staff has added a new recommendation that we didn't explicitly talk about in August, but it's drawn from your discussion, and that is to provide formal direction to your policy committee uh, to look at your existing language on the issues of uh, fee waivers and or reductions. And again, the specific direction that we think would make sense to the policy committee is to A, consider should there be some prescription on what constitutes a, a financial hardship? And then secondly, are there certain proposals that this commission collectively wants to incentivize, either by a fee reduction or a waiver, that you otherwise don't want to discourage because the applicant will say, I don't want to put down that, you know, that uh, fee amount? Examples would be um, annexations of lots that have septic tanks into sewer districts, uh, or uh, dual annexations where right now under your existing policies, if we were to take an annexation uh, that is simply seeking um, inclusion in a, in a sanitary district, and by policy we want to also add that to a city, uh, your policies right now would direct us to also collect another fee from that applicant. So that might be a discussion that the, the policy committee may want to have. This again is staff doing additional reflection on our own. If you want to maintain the baseline, and deal with these type of issues on a case-by-case -case basis, well, then I would suggest pass on this latter recommendation and just move on uh, the update itself. And so uh, there is a 60-day window, unless you specify, uh, specify otherwise, in adopting a brand-new fee schedule. So if you take action tonight in the affirmative, uh, the applicants out there won't see this until, uh, I think, December 8th. Uh, so with that, by law, this is a notice public hearing. I'd be happy to answer any questions, Chair, before or after. Uh, I have Commissioner Conton and Commissioner McDonald and Commissioner Phillips. Just, just for the record, um, it's 126, isn't that right, rather than 127? Oh. Yes, just, thank you. Just for yeah. the record. And then... I was wondering if there, if you see any problem um, on the latter provision of making it um, determining the fees on a case by case basis. Is there a disadvantage to that? You could get involved in emotional testimony um, on a case by case basis. If you have a policy that is more prescriptive up front, uh, it provides your staff internal direction to provide that applicant uh, guidance before they come forward. Uh, in absence of more prescriptive language, staff would simply say, well, you can make your best uh, case at the commission. I don't have anything to, to say other than um, you know, staff's own personal uh, thoughts on the merits. Uh, you could go either way. Again, you've, you've had this in place uh, for X number of years, and I don't think it's been an issue, but just based on your discussion at the last meeting, um, there seemed to be interest in, again, what are the parameters of the financial hardship as it relates to your duties in discharging the law? Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, Dan? Um, just one question, uh, Keen. Have we received any public comment about the fee change? Uh, we received some questions, uh, specifically from uh, some agencies, but we didn't receive any written comments uh, and certainly uh, no, no complaints, which given, again, the, the significant change, I think is a, a good thing and probably uh, is explained in a way that, uh, or somewhat explainable in the sense that, again, uh, your, your fees have been in place since, I think, 1998 was the last time you altered your, your hourly staff rate. And as a follow-up, uh, I would be in favor of the fee reduction, but I do want policy direction from the policy committee. 
Thank you. Uh, I just want uh, uh, curiosity as much as anything, a uh, uh, clarification. As, as the chair of the uh, Santa Fe Sanitation District uh, uh, a year ago or so, I asked that um, the report that was prepared in 2005 regarding consolidation be updated. Um, is there, uh, I should have asked this before, a request in the update perhaps, but I'm, I'm now curious. Uh, is there a charge, or will there be a charge to this, in this case, sanitation district for that update? No, this, the, 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 the request for the study is incorporated into LAFCA's own mandate. Okay. If there was a reorganization that the commission deduced was appropriate to pursue, the commission could either initiate it on its own or tell San Rafael Sanitation or another party, we're not going to do this, we're not going to initiate it on our own because of budget constraints, but you know, here's a green light to pursue it. But that would be a discussion for the commission to have if they reach a conclusion in that ballpark. And thank you for the clarification. Uh, great. Uh, so, Keen, there's um, a statement here about two factors under C CKH that drive the most. You need staff time, level of consent, type of environmental review. Yes. And <clears throat> later on, you talked about the median rates applied by other variant lab because maybe you could talk about um, how the fees are alignment with other lab codes. And then also kind of echo um, Commissioner Rodoni's uh, comment, too. I, I also am in favor of reduced fees, particularly if it's overriding public health concern like uh, septic systems, smaller lots, that folks may not have any incentive to do it, and this might be another incentive. Or if this board would like to promulgate uh, certain things and, and offer that up. So I, I think it's good to have the flexibility in that with this new policy. Well, certainly, and in terms of, uh, Commissioner Murray, your question about uh, regional comparisons. So if you take a look at Attachment 4, uh, you'll see that there are five other LAFCOs in the San Francisco Bay Area that would have a fee structure that would be very similar to what we're uh, proposing here. And based on that similarity, essentially, Marin would still fall um, either at the low or medium end of what other Bay Area laboratories would be charging. So to say another way, we're still a pretty good deal relative to what other these five other Bay Area LAFCOs are charging. Um, and again, it would certainly get you much closer to your cost recovery in terms of these numbers that we came up with, that, that 126, that's based on your budgeted uh, labor and administrative costs for 1450. So there's certainly a direct correlation. So I, I, I just point out on that uh, attachment that Napa and, and Sonoma, which are the two counties that are closest to Marin size and number, it seems that we're pretty much in the ballpark there, a little deviation. And that's for making up for essentially a, what? 13, 14 years of not increasing it. So, we're in LAFCO has, has been behind the trend, which is to increase fees to get as recapture as much uh, funds as possible. Yeah, and just and just for the added context, so in 1998, when the commission last did its uh, schedule of fees, there, I think there was maybe five factors that you had to consider any time you did a boundary change proposal. Well, now you have. 16, but those each of those 16 are multi layers So just the workload for the commission and going through a boundary change, you know, has increased threefold, which would be consistent then again with, with the, the proposed increase to the fee schedule. Okay. And then to echo comments of my colleagues, I too am in favor of a, a set policy for determining hardships or the exceptions to the general rule of what the cost would be. Uh, I think it it's better for us to be guided by that where we set it in a, in a manner that we can calmly think through what the ramifications are uh, instead of reacting to an applicant com coming in on a case-by-case -case basis. So, um, you are recommending... Alternative Action 1, we cover both the adoption of the updated fee schedule and direction for policy committee to come back to this board uh, with some language to consider on the issue of fee reduction slash waivers. Okay. Uh, 
Do I hear a motion? I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner Burdick. Yeah. Uh, Chris, can you come up and speak oh, sure. to the microphone so we can capture you here? Um, I agree with everything that everyone's just said, and the hourly rate Thank certainly you. needs to go up. I just had a question or maybe an observation about the municipal service for you maintenance fee. Um, there doesn't seem to be a connection between getting charged the fee this year, next year, and the MSR, which is, and let's say that hypothetically I'm, my septic tank fails and I have to annex, and so I'm going to get 20%. And the MSR on my agency was done last year. It isn't going to be done again for five years. I'm going to be paying for rent municipals, MSR, or somebody else's who doesn't really have anything to do with me, per se. And if we look at it you know, holistically, it sure does. Everything is all part of the big... But no, it's objected. I just... I don't know. Chris, I'm not sure. Are you saying you're going to have a rough time sleeping tonight, or you oh, would like somebody? No, in West, in West Rim, we always sleep well. Except <laughs> it's deer running season, and I found that's it. Well, I'll entertain a motion then uh, to uh, adopt the staff recommendation, which is alternative one. So, uh, do we need to close the public hearing? Uh, you know, we don't need to close it because I never opened it. Uh, we should open the public hearing and hear from anybody now who wants to speak that's not a commissioner or an alder. Not a not seeing anyone wishing to address the commission on this matter. Uh, I'll make a motion first. Close the public hearing. So moved. Second. And a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstain? Motion passes. Now to the motion uh, to adopt the staff recommendation <laughs> with the uh, material going to the policy committee to report back to the commission on some of their thoughts. No motion? I'll move, I'll move staff's recommendation as presented. Well, I'll second. Okay. A motion and a second to approve the staff recommendation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstaining? The motion passes. Uh, another hearing item, our next. Uh, our next item, item 8, uh, the financial audit for fiscal year uh, just ended on June 30th. Thank you, Chair. So uh, for both uh, receiving and filing, we have uh, an audit report, the very first audit report prepared for Marin Lafco for the Commission. Uh, and again, it deals just with the 2012-13 uh, fiscal year. Um, and again, the idea behind the audit uh, is to take a look at LAFCA's financial statements and test them up against you know, the standards that uh, GASB, the Governmental Accounting Standards Board in Connecticut, sets for uh, all public agencies. So with that in mind, uh, I'm certainly pleased to uh, note we got a clean bill of health. Uh, there were no errors or omissions identified uh, in the consultant's review. Uh, R.J. Riccardi and Associates out of uh, San Rafael. Uh, so that's a good thing. Certainly credit to Candace and Peter Banding for, uh, again, a clean bill of health. Um, I do want to take uh, just a moment and uh, uh, express my appreciation to the Commission to going forward with this expenditure because uh, irrespective of the outcome, and again, it's a good outcome, uh, your staff learned quite a bit in just going through the process of the audit and working with RJ uh, Ricardi and Associates, so it was a good experience on our end. Um, now, there are a couple of uh, items that I do want to put on the Commission's radar that are indirectly uh, or directly tied uh, to the audit itself. Uh, one is a recommendation, and the other is an adjustment to our fund balance. As for the recommendation, uh, in looking at our financial practices, RJ Ricardi Associates is 
and advising this commission, it would be ideal that we uh, firm up our administrative controls and we take our standing administrative practices in accounting and formalize them. And in particular, they noted, and it's a copy uh, of the management letter uh, prescribes this, uh, it'd be good to set some purchase authority limits on your staff and then also to go through um, some best practices in terms of uh, fraud prevention. Again, these are things that essentially a startup agency ultimately needs to get to, and I think we're at that point now uh, where those are things uh, that should be on our radar, and certainly it's already been uh, conveyed on to the policy committee. The second item uh, involves our fund balance. In the course of getting ready for the consultant to come in and, and look at our statements, uh, staff identified a blind spot in which X number of years, about 15 years worth of investment income that Marin Lafka was generating by way of the county treasurer's office uh, was not being reconciled and reflected in our fund balance that staff was presenting to the commission each year as part of the budget process. Uh, said another way, each year Marin Lafka was getting a small amount of revenue by way of the county treasurer's investment uh, portfolio and it was in an account. It was our account the whole time. We just weren't adding that to the end number we were showing to the commission. So the fund balance as of June 30th, 2013 was not the 75000 that we reported to you in our budget document. It actually was 145000 and that's a difference of uh, 80%. Now certainly, uh, this is not being presented in the most ideal scenario and um, for that, it's unfortunate. However, it is a good thing in the sense that we're 80% higher than we thought, excuse me, and it provides this commission some options going forward in talking about OPED, your other post-employment benefit obligations. Right now, uh, public agencies are not required to identify and uh, add up their liabilities for OPED on their balance sheet. Come 15, 16, I believe, we are going to have to start showing that. So the increase or the adjustment to our fund balance certainly will give, I think, the policy committee something to look at in presenting new commission options uh, sooner than later on perhaps how you may want to start pre-funding your obligations. So again, uh, an adjustment to the fund balance that um, we should have caught earlier, uh, we've caught it now, and we're that much better off financially um, than we thought we were. So this is just to formally receive and file. It's a, it's a non-notice hearing, so uh, we didn't uh, circulate a notice to anyone, but we be happy to answer any questions uh, by the commission. So can you, where does that money now sit in this in the <coughs> Department of Finance's fund? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a segregated it's a segregated fund that the uh, county has established, just like our normal general fund uh, uh, balance is, and it's been from it's been segregated from Mern Lafco since the day we separated from the county, I believe, in '98. It just was forgotten essentially. So it, it was it was never put on our books for it. Correct. Is should, well, I guess, but should it sit there until we make some decision where it ought to go? I mean, it's identified. Well, we know where it is, uh, it's, it is. and it's earning, it's earning that proportional investment income. Uh, ultimately, as part of this process, by way of the recommendation of your consultant, you are going to need to start having um, direction on how you want to designate your fund balance. And I think at that point is where you want to start directing staff as to where your money should go and how they should be designated. Do you want X percent uh, unreserved, X percent reserved? Um, so that, that discussion is pending. Uh, I noticed in, in both situations the uh, recommendation that, as I take it, we add our accounting and administrative policies to our policies and procedures manual, that that's going to take some work. And wrestling what we do with the fund is also going to take some work. And we've got a very full work program now. Is it possible to have that included in the upcoming 
work program for the upcoming fiscal year, or is that too far away and we need to do some work on that now? Because something is going to have to give. I think the sooner you, you tackle it, the better. Um, and certainly, perhaps, and this will be a discussion for your December meeting, you have a strategic planning workshop coming up. Yeah. That might be a, a good opportunity for the policy committee to, A, show what we've worked on to date, and then redirect our attention to the fund balance and, again, how you want to manage it going forward. You know, keep in mind, you have a lot of options here. Um, you choose, by practice, to have your funds uh, held by the county treasurer's office. As an independent governmental agency, you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, but all those discussion points, perhaps, at the, the strategic plan, at least being aware of your options, would be a good starting point. Okay, I, ju I just know the policy committee is also supposed to be working on the manual itself, so there's a lot of work in here to do. And I agree, the earlier the better, it's just that it can be done. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, just a quick question. On the, um, or during the strategic planning meeting, would it be possible to come up with some examples um, of what our rate of return might be if we were doing this on our own as opposed to um, having it held by the county? And if if it's to our advantage to stay in the county or if we have um, more opportunities and better opportunities if we were to have it managed on our own? Uh, Commissioner Murray. So I came to thank you very much for this. It's is good to see. And I would really like to stay here about identifying opportunities for the commission to improve the county procedures going forward. You give us some good examples. Our um, district did look at basically payroll systems and did move from the county to a, a separate system, an ADP system, even though the staff prepares it, but it, it, all the liability kind of flows to this group that process it, and we, we found it to be more effective than the county system, certainly the SAP system. So that, that might be something perhaps in the strategic planning uh, that this, this board would like to review. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Phillips? Thanks. Uh, just a brief comment. Um, with regard to the, the, the excess that we now have, or at least as of this date, which is over a year ago now, so uh, hopefully it's increased. But with regard to the amount that we have uh, before us, uh, it's not a large amount, and quite frankly, I suspect you're going to find that the county is not getting a very attractive uh, return. But when compared to others, it's probably acceptable considering the amount. I don't think we want to spend a lot of time on it. Although it might be a good idea for the board to have a homework add on, if you will, from the policy committee, an investment policy, pretty standard to have such a thing. And now that there's you know, 100. 50,000 perhaps at this point in time investment policy might, uh, might be appropriate. And I think uh, again, I think your, your suggestion, which we're attempting to do in San Rafael, of paying down OPED might have merit and I look forward to, uh, to that discussion. So the, the action that we would take tonight with the, uh, the auditor's report would be to receive and, and file it. Yeah, a formal motion to receive and file for the record. Okay. That's one of the yes, sure. I apologize. Um, I, don't re I recall us authorizing uh, or approving the uh, first year audit, which I think was a good idea, and thanks for the recommendation. And obviously, it resulted in some positive good information. It is June 30, 2013, which is again over a year. When did they actually start the audit? Um, they started in uh, early August, so right after uh, our last meeting. They came in, and so it was a, about a month and a half turnaround. Okay, so we can expect uh, June of 2014 fairly soon. Uh, good question. So I was going to go to the commission at the next meeting uh, for that uh, expense approval. Um, and so, presumably, we'd be able to turn around and have something before you uh, at your February meeting, if not then April at the latest. Um, yeah, because the further it goes along, obviously, the less valuable the information. 
patients. And this is this is interesting, particularly uh, since uh, the discovery of part of the bones that hadn't been previously recorded. But you know, it is a year and a half old. Has the right value. We would probably have to agendize the consideration of that appropriation. So I take it that's your recommendation we do that. Uh, it, it would be. Yeah. I guess it would be my recommendation. It makes sense. It's good practice. So, Keen, I'm sure you're busily writing this down. For I'm definitely coming week. back in December. Okay. okay. Good. And with that, I'll uh, move the acceptance of the uh, financial audit for fiscal year end of June 30, 2013. Second. Motion to and second to uh, receive the document and uh, appropriately file it. Well, I would say accept. We received the report. We received the report. We received the report. Uh, all those commissioners in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Commissioner opposed. And commissioner abstaining. Motion passes. Uh, turning to item number nine, which is a also a hearing item. Uh, the update proposed revisions to the uh, scope of analysis for the uh, water municipal service. Thank you, Chair. So, uh, two related items for the Commission to pick up uh, for this uh, discussion on your uh, comprehensive uh, water study or municipal service review on water study in, in Marin County. Uh, the first, as you mentioned, is simply just an update to advise the Commission where staff is relative to your approved scope of analysis. And then the second item uh, is action, and that is to consider some revisions that your staff has identified therein that we believe uh, will help move things uh, going forward. Uh, now, as for the update itself, uh, your staff has been following uh, the approved scope of analysis to a T as it was approved back in February of this year. And right now, we are uh, in the midst of the second and certainly the most time intensive of the five prescribed phases uh, of the water study. And this involves preparing uh, profiles essentially many municipal service reviews on their own of the eight affected agencies that are included in the study. Uh, and as of today, we are just about halfway done. We've prepared uh, four. All of them happen to be in West Marin, uh, Mere Beach, Stinson, uh, Bolinas, and Inverness. Those profiles, uh, if they're not already in the hands of their general manager for internal review, they're going to be, I think in Inverness's case, they'll be uh, um, sent out uh, next week. And we are confident that we'll be in a position to be done with all four of those reviews uh, before your next meeting in Dece December. That will then allow us to transition and focus solely on those remaining four agencies uh, that happen, for the most part, to be in East Marin. Okay, you have uh, North Marin Water, Municipal, and then our two recycled water purveyors, Las Colinas Sanitary or Las Colinas Valley Sanitary and Nevada Sanitary. And if all goes uh, according to plan, and certainly now with the help of Kevin uh, next to me, I think we're in good shape to project being done uh, ahead of our February meeting. All said a different way, we are making progress on the water study, okay? And staff is certainly pleased with the work product that is being generated. That said, we are behind. We're behind by about four months uh, as of today. So it's this dynamic, okay, that staff comes to you tonight um, with two sets, essentially, of revisions that, again, we think make sense going forward. Uh, the first one is to simply sync up the timelines as we had uh, anticipated in uh, February. Well, let's sync them up to where we are today. Okay. The second and more substantive set of revisions is to add a brand new phase to the water study. Go from five in, uh, uh, to six. And that next phase would involve bringing forward in groupings, first West Marin and then East Marin, uh, the agency profiles to the commission for review and discussion, beginning at your next meeting. We bring you the West Marin agencies, and then presumably we bring you the East Marin agencies uh, at the following meeting in February. And the idea behind this revision is twofold. First and foremost, we're looking for some momentum. 
And we want to start getting you the work that uh, we've been uh, tackling. And so you can see and provide us direction on where this study is going before we start issuing written determinations that would be part of a complete draft report. And again, the determinations are where you weigh in as commissioners on are there any governance uh, issues that should be looked at? Are there boundary changes that should be focused in on? Um, things of that nature. And so the idea is, let's get start getting the work before the commission as other work continues, and in doing so, um, also give some ad additional attention uh, to local agencies and local conditions that right now is just not provided in, in the scope of analysis. Um, there's a benefit also to the agencies to this. Um, right now, your scope of analysis only really contemplates two open public review periods. By adding this third step, this step that basically would be referred to as you know, presenting agency profiles, you'd be allowing a, a third bite of the apple for not only the agencies, but commissioners and the public to get engaged and provide direction, again, before the determinations are drafted. Um, so, uh, we have a red line uh, version of our changes to the scope of analysis, I believe, attached to your gender report. I'd certainly be happy to answer any questions. And last but not least, I did personally email each general manager, uh, all eight general managers uh, for the water agencies, advising them a week ago that this is where my recommendation was going. If they had any concerns, let me know. And I heard back from a few just some clarifying questions, but no concerns were noted. So I think. Um, we're in good shape on that. So I'll turn this back to uh, the chair for consideration. Okay, and as I read this also, this is how you can accomplish the work that's set out. You yeah. need the extra four months. In many ways, it's redirecting in the more organic way that the study has kind of taken form. Okay. I understand how that goes. Um, any questions of Keen? This is a public hearing matter, so I might want to open it up. But any questions of Keen by the commissioners? Uh, get any clarification? I would just like to say that I think that even though you might be behind, you've done an incredible amount of work to get this far. Well, yes, and we recognize when this work program was adopted, it was a very ambitious one. Um, I'm going to open the public hearing uh, on this matter. And, uh, anyone from the public would like to address the commission on this particular agenda item? Now is your opportunity. Uh, not seeing anyone, I will uh, ask for a motion to close the public hearing. Move to close the public hearing. Second. And motion to second. <coughs> All those in favor of closing the public hearing, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstained? The public hearing is closed. Uh, to the substance of the uh, agenda item. I'll move action one, the proof of the position outlining this agenda report, the scope of the analysis for the letter study, any desire to vote, any desire to change it. Assuming there's none remains. Second. Okay, a motion and a second. To approve the motion to abstain. <laughs> all, that. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstain? Motion passes. Uh, move to the next item. It also is a hearing item. It's support for draft legislation involving state power authorities. Thank you, Chair. So this item is for the Commission to consider taking one, if not two, uh, proactive steps with respect to a draft legislative proposal that a Calafka work group has come up with that happens to be chaired by yours truly that takes aim at uh, creating um, a tie under, or I should say a relationship under government code between the world of LAFCOs and the world of joint power authorities, or JPAs. Uh, and this is an issue that this commission has discussed in different iterations, I believe, uh, even before I showed up. And it deals with what I think is fairly described as a disconnect under current government code in which 
uh, you have an increasing, and certainly understandable, an increasing role on the part of JPAs in directly providing core municipal services. Um, irrespective of connectivity to LAFCO's longstanding mandate to be in the business of matching uh, community, community needs with uh, service providers. And certainly this issue is magnified for a number of LAFCOs, and I would certainly put Marin in this category, in which we just don't really know the full extent and scope of JPA services uh, unless they're voluntarily brought to our attention, either directly by way of an agency or indirectly, whether it's a, a newspaper article or you know, a grand jury report or something of that nature. Um, and certainly others have focused in on this divide. Uh, Cal Forward, uh, California Forward, the Legislative Analyst Office, and then even, again, the Marin County Grand Jury have all tackled this issue and, and have said, you know, there should be a formal relationship between LAFCOs and JPAs. So that's the context. And so a few months back, I came to this commission and I said, you know, Cal LAFCO is looking for proposals uh, for future legislative uh, actions. What do you think about talking about JPAs? And you all nodded your heads, so at least those who are here. And so I went off and I sent my email, and Cal LAFCO responded in the affirmative and created this work group. And has ultimately come up with this draft proposal before you. Again, to create a first step in formalizing a relationship between LAFCOs and GPAs. And the legislation that you have before you would do three things. Okay? First and foremost, it would require JPAs to start filing their agreements and their amendments uh, with LAFCOs, just as they already do with the Secretary of State. Okay? So that's the first step. The second uh, uh, change would be uh, expand uh, LAFCO law to allow local LAFCOs, if they choose to, uh, to include JPAs in municipal service reviews. Just like the law currently provides that discretion to you and your 57 partners in the state in dealing with private water systems. So it would mirror that legislation. And then finally, and this is an issue maybe not as prevalent in Marin, but certainly uh, where I uh, came from before in a lot of other counties, certainly in Central Valley, uh, it would change the way existing LAFCO law reads with respect to outside service extensions. Again, this is the law that as of 2001 says, anytime a city or district wants to provide new or extended services by contract outside uh, their jurisdictional boundary, they can't just do it on their own. They have to come to the commission and they have to get written uh, approval. Um, this legislation would clarify that JPAs, for purposes of outside service extensions, uh, would be covered, meaning if a city and a JPA enter into an agreement uh, to provide outside services to some area, they would have to go to LAFCO. And the second change would be make sure or clarify that LAFCO, not the city, not the special district, and not the JPA decides when exemptions apply. Um, and that actually has become a big issue throughout the state. Um, so again, this is viewed as, I think, a measured first step in creating a relationship. And certainly, and I'll, and I'll speak directly to the grand jury's comment that has come up, I think, in four of the last five reports, it would allow this LAFCO and other LAFCOs to expand their role as a, as a true repository of governmental uh, agency services. We just would be that much more aware of the when and where of JPAs in our respective counties. So the two items we are asking this commission to consider this evening is first, um, to throw your formal support for, for this draft legislative proposal, to signal to Cal LAFCO and potential authors, like our own assembly member, that there is real interest among individual LAFCOs, and that there is real belief that this is a public policy issue that needs to be addressed. And then second, and this is certainly unique because generally LAFCOs don't uh, offer to co-support legislation that's statewide, but because we have a unique position and we have direct experiences with JPAs, both good and challenging, the challenging would be, let's say, SASM, uh, you could offer direct uh, testimony uh, in, in explaining and uh, in, in justifying why this bridge needs to be made. So if you're comfortable, we'd ask not only that you support the legislation, 
but also offer to co-sponsor it if CalAFCO deems it to be um, in their interest as well. So two separate items. Uh, certainly be happy to answer any questions that you uh, uh, may have. Uh, Commissioner Adoni and Commissioner Clement. Um, Keen, I, I think it's a good idea. One of the questions I have, though, um, in reading this through this, I don't see any funding mandates. In other words, that the GP, GPAs would pay for, like special districts and cities do, their spirit reviews. And, and I'd be cautious about a law that mandates something or potentially mandates without a funding mechanism. Um, I know that others have raised that question. Um, this would not change the funding dynamic at LAFCOs in terms of you already have counties paying a third, you have special districts paying a third, and you have cities paying a third. Within those three categories, presumably, um, they are going to be also the governing bodies of an effective JPA. So indirectly, one could say that they are JPAs. JPAs are already funding LAFCO by way of their parent organization. Now, where the disconnect occurs, uh, Commissioner Rodini, I absolutely agree. JPA uh, uh, JPAs have been defined by way of recent legislation to not necessarily include governmental entities. Um, certain nonprofits now are uh, allowed to uh, form a JPA as well as uh, recognize Native American tribes. And so they fall outside of the established spectrum. So certainly what we could do is, in our communication going forward to CalAFCO, um, make it clear that our advocation to give LAFCOs the authority to include JPAs in municipal services is predicated on being discretionary and solely at the um, choosing of an individual LAFCO, like it is for private water systems. Um, most LAFCOs do not include private water systems in their municipal service groups because of the funding disconnect. This LAFCO is only going to include a memo identifying the where and when, and that's about all. Um, but certainly that's a relevant uh, comment to, to forward on to Cal LAFCO. Um, Right now, in the county itself, there's such difficulty in trying to identify what all the JPAs are. Some of them are really obscure. They're hidden in the woodwork. They're not necessarily accountable to anybody. Would this legislation help to put the onus on the JPAs to identify uh, themselves to LAFCO so that then we would actually have uh, a directory of all the JPAs that are enforced. I mean, that certainly is the envision end goal, that LAFCA would take the information from the reporting JPAs and expand their local uh, directories. Um, you're absolutely right. I don't know right now how many JPAs there are in, in Marin County. I've asked, and I've gotten a lot of different numbers. Part of that is the difference between what might be active and what might be an inactive JPA. Um, because once a JPA files with the Secretary of State their establishment papers and then any amendments, the only other reporting they need to do is with uh, the State Controller's Office, but that's only if they're collecting a public tax dollar. A lot of JPAs are just simply internal financing mechanisms, and so they do, that reporting is not known. But certainly the comment of how many JPAs are there? We're right now not sure. If this law were to be in effect, we certainly would have a better shot at answering that question. Yeah, I mean, I, I see a lot of advantages to it because I fear that there's not much effective oversight on a lot of the uh, JPAs that are in existence right now. Sounds like a big job. Okay, uh, Commissioner Phillips and Commissioner Murray. Thanks. I want to just uh, perhaps better understand uh, this. Of course, Santa Fe, City of Santa Fe has a number of uh, JPAs uh, providing, um, I think, a coordinated, uh, significant amount of coordinated services. So, other than now having a more complete roster, 
of JPUs that are in existence. What what does this do for us? And I, the second part, what authority does LAPCO then have over a proposed JPA uh, being created? So the, the first question or the first comment about what would be the value to LAPCO, well, the first uh, issue that you raised is the value that we would become aware there would be a formal reporting mechanism for LAFCA to be aware of. And it would be up to every LAFCA to decide what they want to do with that information. Some LAFCAs might just say, great, let's update our local directory and be done with it. And for a lot of JPs, that might be appropriate, especially given the scope of what they may or may not be doing. Um, the second comment about, well, would it change the regulatory oversight of JPs? No, not at all. Not in this legislation. This is really just to create a tie in which JPAs are aware of LAFCOs, and LAFCOs are aware of JPAs. Um, that's where this is going. My bottom line question is, uh, is it just one more thing that the cities are going to have to do, uh, another reporting mechanism uh, that doesn't really accomplish very much? I wouldn't view it that way. I would view it as an opportunity for a third party to, A, become aware of this shared service arrangement, and in some cases, maybe become its cheerleader. Uh, you know, in many cases, JPAs like Central Marine Police Authority, that may be a model that this LAFCA wants to promote going forward. So the better um, examples and knowledge we have, we may end up becoming, again, a cheerleader for JPA creations. Uh, it might be able to play matchmaker where, you know, a special district organization may not work, but a JPA relationship, maybe that's what you should be looking at, special district X and citywide. So I would view it in the affirmative, certainly. Understand, uh, understand it yourself. I just know we are, as a city, and I suspect many are already tapped out in terms of reporting here, there, and elsewhere. It's just an accumulation of record. I'm lukewarm on this, I must say. Okay, uh, Commissioner Murray? Yeah, so, all right, <clears throat> Kim, thank you for the report. I, I do, in text of the report, does talk about a blind spot. And I, I agree that, you know, if a group is moving from a, basically a funding mechanism organization to one providing more, more services, that this board needs to be reviewing those governmental services to see if they're effective, then uh, I certainly think that we'll move in the right direction. And seeing that this moves from a state reporting to at least a concurrent reporting at a local level, so uh, I do have a question about State Controller's Office. You mentioned the Secretary of State and State Controller's Office in terms of filings and, and the amendment with the State Controller's Office. Are, are they filing at both locations, or is there uh, some difference there? And the second item, too, is just, just curious on the um, representative group. You mentioned uh, Butte, Nevada, and Placer Counties, yeah. and how they come together to see that uh, there, there's this blind spot with it. So in terms of the reporting, all, all JPAs, before they can start uh, you know, technically providing a service, whether it's directly or just through a funding mechanism, they have to essentially be chartered and filed with the Secretary of State. Now, maybe that just happens once and there's no amendments thereafter, so they're done with the Secretary of State thereafter. Uh, a JPA, as I understand it, is only going to file with the uh, State Controller's Office, again, if they have uh, a, a tax uh, or a fee uh, um, direct um, revenue or expense uh, relationship. So an inactive JPA is certainly not going to be filing with uh, the state controller's office. And a JPA that's simply formed to, you know, like Marine Map, good example. We're part of the JPA. Uh, we're part of this group of 10 or so agencies that have combined resources to uh, essentially provide uh, mapping services uh, on our respective halves. There's no public direct public tax dollars that are being generated or spent, so there'd be no need for us to ever report to the State Controller's Office. And in terms of, I'm sorry, the, the last question, how did the CalAFCO work group kind of take form? It was a show of hands. So, uh, you know, we basically said, who's willing to work on this? And I raised my hand very uh, uh, clearly, and I made eye contact with those next to me, and they happened to be from Butte, they happened to be from uh, Solano, and then uh, Placer. That's how the work group came about. Um, well, to me, this seems to be a step in providing additional transparency to government here in Marin, and I, and I believe that 
is a very helpful process. Um, Jack, did you wish to speak? Yeah. Uh, I was, was speaking out of turn. I kind of share uh, Commissioner Phillips's uh, new warmness. I'm uh, wondering if we're maybe trying to fix something that's not totally broken. Maybe I can see maybe it's advantageous and appropriate to at least know who, it, who, who where are all the GAPAs are, but they do. And I think there's a lot of them out there, whether it's with police, fire, water agencies. And, uh, and I can see this growing to be in terms of paperwork and record keeping. Uh, but I haven't heard anything is that in the absence of uh, the sort of thing you're suggesting, what, what is the problem? I've never read anything or heard any scathing report in the paper or any other sort of thing as the, you know, some people have been indicted or some agencies that have been gotten into huge financial problems. But what, what is the problem other than not knowing uh, where, who and they are, where they are, what they're doing? Well, that in of itself, as Commissioner Murray pointed out, that's a problem for LAFCO. So you're charged with, again, matching... Uh, the best municipal service provider with the current and present needs of a particular community. Over the last 20, 30 years in Marin County, to my knowledge, there's only been one new special district formed subject to your oversight. That's the Tamales Community Services District. Although I don't know for sure the number, I'm, I'm confident that over that same period of time, there's been probably a number of GPAs formed. Sure you're right. And so... It's essentially following the trend line in where California governmental services are being uh, the vehicle for those services to be delivered. So in terms of a particular problem, um, it's the unknown. We don't know what the problems are because we don't have any real insight as to the scope or the extent. Now, anecdotally, and I wasn't here, and I, and I don't want to speak out of turn, my cliff note reading of, of some of the challenges that this commission had with the, with the South Marin sewer issue was you had six collection agencies feeding into one JPA, and a JPA that was organi organizationally set up not necessarily to be as accountable to its member agencies on an equal level. And when things went south, the member agencies started to, I think, literally sue each other, at least in one case. And so there's an example where a core service like wastewater treatment, which is certainly in the radar of the commission, um, there was a breakdown, literally and figuratively a breakdown, and the commission had no real mechanism to have insight into that beforehand or really to offer uh, um, an opinion um, at the time. But what was asked then through special legislation was to jump into a situation that had been decades in the making. Um, Long way to say the problem is not easily defined, but creating a marriage just in reporting, um, I think there's a lot of benefits to it. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm still not yeah. clear as to uh, what our role, that is, LAFCO's role, would be in all of this. Let's take your example. Uh, let's say that we now had uh, all of the JPAs reporting in some fashion to LAFCO. Uh, in your specific example, what would, have La what would LAFCO have done that would have resulted in anything different than actually took place? Well, uh, A, LAFCO would have had a, you know, first and foremost, just the repository of the JPA catalog. Um, I don't know if LAFCO could have interceded and provided any input uh, that would have stopped what happened at SASM from occurring, but you would have had a mechanism in place for the commission had it chose to. It's up to discretion. Uh, when the first MSR occurred in 2002, to maybe take a, a, a longer look at that relationship and offer uh, comments and or direction therein. Um, perhaps my example created a unnecessary redirection. At the end of the day, what I, what I really am trying to convey here is this is about information gathering. 
what each commission chooses to do with that information is a variable. We very well may just collect uh, uh, and expand our local directory, and that's about it. But in of itself, that is a public service. Having a more ex inclusive repository of where governmental services are being provided and who's providing them. Maybe that's as far as this LAFCO ever takes this authority that's embedded in this proposal. But even if that's the limit, I still think it would be a value. And just to follow up, I, I'm not saying that there wouldn't be uh, some value in that, but of course there's a cost associated with creating that value. That is, all of the entities reporting to LAFCO, and it's basically, near, it feels to me, it, it sits there. And, and I don't know if LAFCO, I, I can barely, really knew at this. So maybe LAFCO in the past, and maybe others know better than I, uh, have taken proactive uh, action based on knowing that there were uh, JPAs out there. I mean, with the to San Rafael, believe me, we know all the JPAs we're involved in. If anybody asks, we'll give you a list. Uh, but now if we have to report to one more entity, it's just one more thing to do. While it's creating value, it's also uh, it's creating uh, one more step to be assigned to staff that has to be accomplished. And, and I question the value of uh, that, uh, the cost of that, when compared to the value that it might otherwise create, since we already have a listing of, in our case, JPAs. Commissioner Condon. Okay. Um, just, you know, with all due respect, I really think that um, even if it amounts to just keeping a directory, I think the, the, um, the whole perspective of having this transparency and accountability uh, are, those are really important things. And uh, I know that when we talk about the JPAs and when we had issues um, a couple of years ago with Sausalito and Southern Marin, those were kind of intertwined. And that had, that just happened to come to LAFCO. But I think that to have this as a database is really invaluable to all the other jurisdictions. When we talk about Central Marin Police, we're the only um, police authority of its kind in the state, and people might not even realize that if they didn't see this particular um, item that's listed in the directory. And so many, um, I, I know even with MCCMC, with um, Marin County mayors and council members that um, trying to amass all the JPAs was a, was really a daunting thing, although it didn't entail any money. Um, but just to acquire a database was was something. And I, I think this is a great service, not only to Marin, but to all the different jurisdictions throughout the state. Commissioner Murray? Uh, the key... Tom, what's your perspective in terms of the filing? So it sounds like there's a filing with the state. Do you think initially that would be just a concurrent a copy to LAFCO? So it's not a whole lot of uh, additional reporting requirements. It's just merely that if those local LAFCOs decide to receive that, then they are requesting the state to have a, an additional copy for the LAFCO, and that's recorded. Is that am I no. right on that? It's uh, initially getting... Yeah, so the, the information. you're correct. So the, the, the phrase uh, in the actual proposal is copy. So it would, it would literally be a second copy. Um, presumably, if a, if a JPA uh, is formed uh, today and doesn't do any amendments, well, they would never have to file another uh, copy with LAFCO. It's only when they are formed and do a subsequent amendment. Uh, Commissioner Dunn. So, um, Keen, I want to be clear because in your proposal you have three bullets. Uh, number one is really the filing component that you're talking about to yes. share copies. But the two other components actually go a lot further, or potentially go a lot further, depending if the lab could choose them, chooses to use those. And you're talking about municipal service reviews for JPAs, possibly lab oversight. I don't disagree that maybe that's where this all should go. 
yeah. that they don't need oversight and they don't need peer reviews because that's what we're supposed to be doing is orderly government and knowing what's going on and knowing if, if JPs are doing the service for the best service they can or is someone else able to do that service better or all those questions that we ask about special districts and cities now would be the same questions. But for tonight, I want to be clear because we're focusing on reporting but your proposal actually seems to go a little further than that. I don't disagree with, with yep. where you think it may go, but I want to be clear about what you would like us to consider tonight. Yeah, no, absolutely. There are these three distinct components. The filing that we've talked about, and then looking at page 96 of the packet or page 3 of the staff report, the second and third uh, components would be authorize LAFCOs to include JPAs in service reviews. Now, the reason why that's in there is because in, many, in talking with other LAFCOs, um, they're sometimes resistant. Unless there is explicit authority that says, yeah, you can, look, you can include a JP in your service, in your service review, um, LAFCOs will not do it. So this just provides arguably clarification of a power you arguably already have. I.e., like San Bernardino Alaska already had already includes JPAs in their in their municipal service reviews. That's their orientation. Um, I would be hesitant to do that without some explicit acknowledgement from the legislature that that was a, a task they wanted us to at least contemplate. The set the third issue um, is specific to an existing set of statutes dealing with outside service provision that would clarify that. Joint power authorities are defined in this particular section as a public agency that can enter into a contract for outside services, and that LAFCO, irrespective of if it's a JPA, if it's a city or a special district asking, but LAFCO be the one that determines when exemptions apply. Um, I know that sounds like, well, it's a LAFCO law, why wouldn't LAFCOs be the ones who determine when exemptions apply? I have been in experience uh, directly and others too where um, if a city or district believes their service arrangement qualifies as an exemption, they won't ask LAFCO. They'll just simply say, well, it doesn't say we have to get your approval for the exemption. We know it meets the exemption. We don't have to go to you. This would say, no, 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 you at least have to check in with LAFCO so there's concurrence. Um, this, in many ways, is an add-on. It, it doesn't This last part is not necessarily tied to JPAs. This is a broader comment, but I guess the working group, and again, this was, what, this was not what we originally asked, but when you start looking at this stuff, the work group said, well, if we're going to uh, do something, can we clarify this blind spot in, in outside service law? Again, I don't think this... I don't think there are many outside service extensions in Marin County, as far as I know. Uh, when I met with Peter for that first week, he uh, mentioned that this commission hadn't ever had a proposal for an outside service extension, to his knowledge. Um, in a lot of LAFCOs, this is their main activity. Um, so it's probably more relevant for others than perhaps us. Keen, I have a question. Um, JBAs now can set their own boundaries as to where the powers that they would have apply or, or they must they be within the existing boundaries of whatever institution it is. Yes, the, the latter. But if one, one say for example has, one JPA has the powers uh, to provide urban services uh, into an area where another municipal government doesn't have that capability. Could they be coupled so that the urban services could be provided into an area that the JPA that provides urban services does not now have the capability of doing? It would be dependent on the commission's, uh, the commission's discretion on how you would uh, treat a, a kind of a broad and open-ended exemption under the law that says anytime two public two or more public agencies enter into an agreement for outside services that is a substitute for an existing service, that's clear, okay, a substitute for an existing service, or 
a substitute for a service adequately contemplated by one of the agencies, it's exempt. Well, what's adequately contemplated? It's, it's a gray area. So maybe to answer the question, um, JPs can only operate within their shared boundaries of their parent company or parent uh, governing body, um, but it's a gray area as to, well, what if a JPA here is really just supposed to be in the business of uh, you know, funding a, a, a taxi um, system and this JPA is a wastewater provider? Can they have shared boundaries in which the wastewater goes into that other JPA? It's, it's a discretionary decision. And it would seem that without any lap of control, theoretically, that could take place. Oh, yeah. Well, theoretically. So presumably you're going to have one or two or more parties agreeing to, to this arrangement. Yeah. Um, it's, it's arranging without going through consolidation is uh, sharing those services. Which I would suggest we're trying to encourage. So I don't think it's driving so much evidence of you know, uh, bad behavior. Well, I was just thinking of our role to protect agricultural lands and uh, how services could be provided to agricultural lands that could be a tipping point for urbanization. So, and this is specific to outside service ex uh, uh, extensions or provision. Again, when cities or districts want to provide services, not by annexation, but by a contract or an agreement. So, um, there's two immediate thresholds to consider. On LAFCA's end, you can only say yes to an outside service extension um, that's within a sphere of influence if you explicitly say, this is in anticipation of a later annexation. If these uh, areas outside the sphere of influence, the legislature says, Lafka, you can only say yes if you make a public health or safety uh, threat finding. That's the onus on you. The existing law then has uh, four or five exemptions that's uh, under the subsection uh, E, and I'm referring to uh, 56133 in government code that says, under these scenarios, and I think we have a copy of the, the text as it is as an attachment. Um, this requirement, this statute does not apply. An easy one is the transfer or conveyance of non-potable water for agricultural uses. Okay, that's pretty clear. That doesn't need to come to laugh. Uh, the provision of recycled water is an exemption. So if Craig in uh, Los uh, Galinas Valley Sanitary wanted to extend a purple pipe out to uh, Sausalito, you wouldn't have to come to LAFCO uh, under 56133. The complicated exemption that we were referring to is if two or more public agencies reach an agreement and the service to be provided, again, is either a substitute uh, for an existing service provided, let's say Las Galinas is going to, or uh, let's say North Marin is going to start serving um, Marinwood. Okay, well, Marin Municipal already serves that area, so we can make the finding relatively easy. That's an established service. You don't have to go to LAFCO. That's a governmental relationship. It would be more complicated if Marin, uh, uh, Marin Municipal contracted with North Nevada to serve Lucas Valley, a portion of Lucas Valley, Marin Municipal hadn't served yet. Marin Municipal, I say, well, we've contemplated serving it. It's in our master plan. So they would argue, and again, this speaks to why the government code section just needs to come back to LAFCA. So LAFCA can vet it out and say, yeah, that makes sense, or no, that doesn't make sense. But ultimately, there is no clear arbitrator on 56133, and that's where this last bullet point is going to. Just have it come back to LAFCO to say yes or no, that exemption applies. Um, it's not 
to be provocative in any sense, and in many ways may help the city or special district or JPA clarify you know, their service obligations. I we went to LAFCO, they said this exemption applies, so we're okay. Or this doesn't look good, and you know what, LAFCO doesn't think this makes sense either. This isn't contemplated. Okay. Uh, yes, Chris. I'm sorry. Um, I haven't opened the public hearing once either, so this is just a commissioner talking. I just to give an issue. I don't know which way this cuts, but two different ways of the different public agencies tried to deal with perception of the same problem. When Tam Valley Community Service District decided it wanted to get out of the fire business in the 70s, 70s, early 80s, it entered into a JPA with Mill Valley. And in essence, Mill Valley took over Tam's fire function. Tam stopped hiring firefighters. All new firefighters were hired by the city of Mill Valley. Uh, ended up with about five old Tam guys in the county retirement plan a bunch of New Mill Valley firefighters in PERS. These guys resented the hell out of these guys over here getting a better pension. The whole thing fell apart at some point. That didn't require any input or oversight from LAFCO at all. When Sausalito decided it wanted out of the fire business, South Grid annexed it and took over the whole operation. I don't know, you know, and LAFCO had a very active, both informal role and formal role uh, in the latter, with a lot of flack in some respects from some members of the city council, and none in the former. And the, the net result was effectually the same, which was the better model, I don't know. Yeah. So the chair is away for a few minutes, and he asked me to take over. Is there other questions from commissioners? Uh, public comment. Anyone in the public want to make a comment? So this is a rather complex issue. Um, we actually don't have a full commission tonight. I'm sure a couple of the missing members might have some strong opinions too. Um, I guess I'm, I'm a little confused about what the staff is asking because even though bulletproof two and three seem to be more uh, sort of cleaning up language or pointing out language that exists, um, I think it, it's that part of it that complicates it. And I'm sure the legislators, in their great wisdom, will sort it all out for us. But um, I am concerned about um, um, having some potential additional workload and not having a funding connection to it. I think if we do spear reverse, decide to do spear reviews for JPAs or or that sorts of things, we should be able to at least uh, fund it somehow with that agency. And, and I think that. That also will um, make us more responsible to that agency, also like we are to special districts and cities, in terms of they are under at that point too. Anyway, that, that's my two cents. I'm in favor of this. I, I just want to be clear, and I don't want to rush it out the door. Either. So I'll pass it back to the chair. Uh, it seems to me there's a, a general consensus on the file. So I'm wondering if we can go through the three bullet points to see where we have agreement here and somehow craft that to what the proposed legislation is. At least you'll have our input of what we would like to see. Well, as I said earlier, I think we, I need to open the public hearing and go through that process before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. We've had that. So uh, anyway, I'm just I'm looking at the commissioners to see if we can go through this sequentially, the three bullet points, and see if we have acceptance of all or any of them. So uh, I, I would let's see how best to do this. I. I was just going to say while you're thinking, I do think that this is going to affect 
maybe positively negatively. I'm still trying to sort it out. I thought I had, and I apologize, but I, upon reflection, uh, don't. Um, we do have references made to CMC, you know, made to city councils, so, uh, the various uh, all the cities. So I'm wondering if it would be appropriate for our next meeting, meeting in December, appropriate to have this issue, since it affects all of our cities with a multitude of JPAs and certainly beyond the cities, but to include the cities, if it would be appropriate to table this um, with uh, with a letter from the team to uh, the various cities to say that this matter is going to be taken up December 11th, I think the day is, for comment by the cities. I think it, it might uh, raise some interesting points. Okay, and, and and special districts, I would assume. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I apologize. Yes, that is. And county. Um, I think also it may be helpful if we do that to consider kind of marrying the, the three points in, in, in the legislation. Somehow I, I, I find that there is a little bit of a disconnect there, at least in my own mind. I do think that the transparency aspect of this is important uh, in how Marin is governed. I think it's important for people to understand that there are other governmental governing agencies out there that make real decisions and that affect them. And we don't know who they are. In fact, when we went through the Southern Marin sewage agency questions of this came up. Well, how many agencies are there? And nobody knew. Nobody knew how many agencies, organizations, authorities govern in, uh, in Marin. So I, I think this is extremely important. Uh, the other matters, the service reviews and the outside services, I'm a little bit more fuzzy around. But I think it's important that uh, if we do table this or carry it over to our next meeting that we put a little attention to how the service reviews would work and, and the outside services question. Because I get a feeling that the folks aren't quite sure how thick the ice is in this pond and therefore how far out they want to go on it. Um, so anyway, I would entertain a motion to carry this over to our next meeting. Uh, to contact or get ever to contact the county, cities, and special districts uh, for their input on this matter. Uh, and it be couched that the intent is not to put burdens on people telling us what they're doing, but to be able to get out before the public the kinds of governance that are going on in the right now. As Commissioner Condon pointed out, there very well may be a good model that others could benefit, if not in the county, throughout the state of California. I move the, um, the matter as the chair has outlined, and, and only to add, if I just check, MCMC at one time, and I don't know if it's current or not, had um, the committee call, uh, or function, but call Joint Power Authority Oversight Committee. I think that still exists. I'm not sure how effective. Can I respond to that? Yeah. Um, no, it's inactive. Um, they haven't met. And uh, it was only limited to the JPAs that didn't have any council members um, on the JPA. And so um, it was, there were things, for example, like the um, uh, Marin Humane. Society where it's a JPA, but there um, were no council members on it. Um, crime task force, major crimes task force at that time didn't have anybody on it. I think they may have changed that. Um, McStop was another one. Um, there, there were quite a few, but also um, it had been made real clear that that wasn't a complete repertoire of JPAs. It was only what could be found. 
And it was very interesting to know that some of these even existed and what they did. Why well, didn't they uh, just uh, being called uh, to, to uh, participate in one of their committee meetings not so very long ago? Uh, so I'm not certain it's completely disbanded. But, but, it, but it might also uh, reinforce the other side of the, the picture, and that is if MCDMC thought there was appropriate to have an uh, oversight committee and um, it's not complete, then it might be an argument in favor of having such a time. Yeah, well, I think that it, it was such an onerous um, job for um, a single council member to undertake because she provided the the committee with everything from financial reviews to um, histories of what the JPA did and it was really quite comprehensive and I think it just became really too much of a task for a single person to do and I think it's asking that that was asking for more than what this is even asking for Okay, we've got a motion. Uh, Commissioner Murray? Just an um, additional comment. Um, one, it sounds like are we continuing the public hearing for additional comment from cities and counties and special districts? In the public, we we'll open it up. That's part of this. Uh, okay, so a modification. Um, and also, I think in terms of directing our executive officer and correspondence, it may be uh, interesting to see if, if this uh, mayor and city council group does have existing studies or things from the past that that's certainly provided to LAFCA. Had it with this one to contact for that. Had it one had that material. Okay, so we have a motion. Uh, I'll second that. And we have a second uh, to carry this matter over to our next meeting and in the interim contact county cities, special districts, uh, and let them be privy to what we're doing and invite the report. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying no. Aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstained? Thank you. Uh, now I'll move on to a really easy matter, which is the discussion of the uh, potential agency official logo. Thank you, Chair. I'll keep my comments relatively brief. Uh, this agency has persisted, to my amazement, without an actual logo in its 60-plus uh, uh, years. And so one of the things that I threw out, and admittedly, this, you know, this is staff kind of driving this and asking for this to be on the work plan was, it'd be kind of nice to have a logo. And so what your staff did was we retained the services of the local graphic artist, we gave them some basic uh, ideas that, you know, essentially, could you come up with a handful of drafts that, you know, articulate, uh, you know, LAFCO's mission in being the business of promoting smart growth, and then relative to, you know, distinctive marine landscapes. And so we got maybe 12 or 15 versions of that broad uh, directive, and then we asked the policy committee, uh, Chair Blanchfield and Commissioners uh, Burdick and Baker, uh, to s narrow it down to three. And so those are the three that you have before you. Now, uh, I appreciate this could be very quick or this could be a very long, drawn-out process. But what I would suggest is, A, are we on the right track? And B, if we're not on the right track, uh, what would be some things constructively that the policy committee can infer and come back perhaps at the next meeting and again, that's assuming there's just not one clear winner where everyone says, you've got it already. So assuming that comment doesn't get made tonight, we're looking for input on where we're going and specifically these three. Thank you, uh, Chair. What are the three? Oh. So. We're not going to be transparent. The three, and the first two look somewhat similar, but you have... And they're labeled in the top left corner, uh, one, two, or three. Oh, thank you. And if you focus in on the gray scale, the first two um, focus in on kind of a more traditional 
agency logo where you're incorporating relatively I iconic landscapes of Marin uh, into, the, uh, into the label Marin Lafco in different iterations. Okay? And the third option that the committee thought was at least worthwhile to come up with uh, is a more you know, kind of a block uh, view of Marin County itself. Um, now, the color versions are not there to further distract you, although I appreciate they could. They were just simply to provide context to how these could possibly play out um, if you choose one is more preferable than the other. Um, I've done this twice before in different agencies, and one was a very clean process, and one took a while. So I'm hoping to go down the middle here. Um, but this is your logo. This is a logo that presumably will uh, outserve uh, everyone in this room and be with Marin Lafka for years uh, uh, forthcoming. So, um, with that in mind, and with the idea that this is an open discussion, and obviously we don't have county members here, um, are we on the right track, Commission? Is there one that at least you think is getting there, or did we swing and miss and need to go back to the dugout? Uh, uh, I'm glad you noted that, that the county members aren't here. And from my standpoint, I think it would be better to have them here uh, when we take any specific action. But as far as giving you direction, it seems to be an appropriate time. So I'm going to let everybody speak their piece, and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. Carla's dying to be the first. <laughs> no, I, not really. I really liked um, the art of one and two, but I did have a problem um, with the the graphic with the mission, and I understand that you know it's a historical um, landmark in the county. But the fact that it um, was religious, I thought, I just thought it might not be the most appropriate thing. So I showed it to a few other people without making any comment. And um, they all had the same comment. And so maybe it's, you know, and they were all different denominations, so there was nothing, you know, where anybody would be offended one way or the other. But I, I like the Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright uh, graphic. I like the idea of the, the mountain um, in the background. All that I, I like. But I, I wish that there could be something else to balance that graphic rather than the church. So, you would like to see the church out? Yeah, although out from there. an artistic perspective, I think the balance... The, you know, visually, I think it's really appealing. But I just think from a theme perspective, it might not be that great a thing. Um, yeah, I would just comment that I lean towards three, but I suggest an ad. I think we should highlight it in color showing egg land versus urban land. I mean, that, that's our reason we're here, protect agricultural. Marin is known for its agriculture, and, and I, I think that uh, highlighting that uh, that will go, go, go make sense because it's showing what we're protecting with others for that our egg lands. So, what you like to do. Anybody else have comments? Sure. Um, I, I find number three a little, let's see, what's the right word? I don't think it's particularly descriptive, it looks like a sort of a, I don't know, lump of dirt to me, uh, but in the county, unless you really know what it's all about. So I'm not particularly enthralled by that. Actually, Pancras. Say again? It's a Pancras. <laughs> same Pancras. Yes, 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 yes. changed the name of the county to better, too, and that's a lot. Of, a better description. Um, I guess my preference, uh, maybe it's biased, but my preference would be uh, two. It's a uh, nice... Uh, presentation, I think it's a nice shape. Frankly, I think the, the mission is symbolic. It's not, it's not, um, both, uh, it's in my view, that religious, but rather uh, 
significant landmark uh, within the county, and it is, of course, the largest city. So I'll throw that in, but it's, uh, it's pretty distinctive. You've got a good sense of what it's all about. That is one of So I think it's pretty So, um, thanks, for the work the committee and uh, staff on this. But I kind of look at the and hear the comments of those looking out again. And uh, I remember as a kid going to uh, National Scout, Boy Scout Jamborees, and uh, we'd say, well, we're from Marin Council. And people would look at you like, yeah, where's that? And you'd, you'd rattle off things. You'd rattle off the iconic things. And, and these that are here are not the iconic things. It was Golden Gate Bridge, and some didn't even know the Golden Gate Bridge. But the very interesting thing, the iconic thing was San Quentin. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we don't necessarily want that on our logo. <laughs> but we, we do. I, I, I was also thinking the same as Dennis is what is our mission? And that should reflect our logo. It's not necessarily iconic things or structures. Uh, and we may want to look at Southern, Central, and Northern Marin and what are those and within our mission. I, I know it's kind of recrafting and maybe spending more time on this, but. You know, certainly I, I think like Golden Gate Bridge, and you see a lot of people using Golden Gate Bridge. The Mount Temple Pius, I think you've kind of captured that, and that's on a lot of different logos. And then something for the north, um, and, you know, Dennis and Chris and others, uh, Jack, kind of help me if there's uh, anything in the north you'd like to see there. But um, I, I agree with uh, Commissioner Rodoni's comment about um, our, what our purview is and trying to incorporate that into um, I guess going to come next, but from my standpoint, I don't like logos unless they are really, really super, uh, because they impart a feeling of nice tribe and no cigar. And I've seen so many logos from particularly cities that are, yeah, you know, I mean, I used to work for one city that was that way. You know, it was great. But I, I like just crisp lettering. But if a logo must appear, I I do like three. Uh, I agree with Dennis's observation. We don't like the uh, the banner that looks like it belongs on a um, butter carton. You know, the, So that's yeah, that's my thought. Chris or Jack, any thoughts? Well, I I like three myself. I can you myself, can you I, come up and oh, speak sure. into the? I I like three myself. Uh, one because it shows the San Andreas Fault and all its glory. Uh, I didn't like the part where the the lettering went across the front and wiped out the Costco Point Grey Station. I believe in Inverness all in one fell swoop, but. Uh, the only logo I ever saw the kind that I thought that I liked was the, the one on the sheriff's patch, um, the one that the you know the, the deputies wear on their their uniform. I always thought that was kind of cool, but I generally tended to agree with Jeff's. I think logos are a waste of time. Myself personally, Jack. No, I don't have anything to add. I, there's several I like, including three. Well, I've got some direction. I know the two members aren't thrilled with uh, uh, logos, but I think I've gotten some input where I can come back to you in December uh, with a revision to number three that creates a color distinction between ag and urban interfaces. I think I can come back uh, with number um, two as is and then an alternate to number two that perhaps replaces the mission with a more perhaps neutral landmark. Um, and of course, these will be vetted by the policy committee again. Um, so we're getting there. And, and, I, and I, I hope the commission will enter, uh, appease me a little longer, and I'll, I'll give it one more effort. And if December, we, we, we don't have any luck, perhaps we'll just table it. But um, I'm encouraged that uh, we're closer tonight than we were yesterday. There are some good base maps out there to get away from the marine pancreas uh, <laughs> objection that are crisp and clear 
and uh, have the, the vegetative types like the egg types that are worth looking at. USGS in particular, and it's free. And uh, just remember the Nike swoosh cost $25. Yeah. Uh, okay, is that... That is it. I've got, I've got my, uh, my orders. Thank you. Okay. Uh, item number 12, report um, on the American Planning Association Conference. Just very quickly, uh, I did do some overnight travel to Anaheim to attend the APA uh, statewide conference. Uh, in fact, I put on a session uh, with a couple of others uh, labeled, What Planners Need to Know About LAFCO? And it was well attended. In fact, I saw some uh, county and a couple of city planners hiding in the back. Uh, 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 and so, um, again, I appreciate the commission's indulgence in allowing me to continue with that association. And I think uh, we're spreading the word uh, therein about, you know, there's a role for us, uh, city and, and uh, uh, county and, and laugh goes to, to play cooperatively. So thank you. Okay. Uh Let's see, we're, we're going to move into executive session now. I just want to uh, report out of our executive session that we held uh, a review of our executive office uh, performance uh, for your first year here on the job, and uh, the commissioners were very appreciative for his final work, and we'll be submitting to him a written review uh, work. So, Thank you. Uh, I'm going to then move on to the executive officer's report, if you have any. Nothing to add. Thank you. And uh, any commissioner announcements and requests? Uh, I don't hear any. I know Dr. Doney said he would like a little bit more candy, but... Uh, so, uh, I'll uh, entertain a, a motion to adjourn to our, our next meeting on December 11th. So, second. Motion and a second. And we don't need to vote on it. And we're adjourned. We're adjourned.